Excuse me. <laughs> you're just barely in my shot. You're either in or you're out, sweetie. Are you in or are you out? You can't just have a nose poking through my shot. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rudy and thank you so much for being here. We're in a little bit of a different setup today because I'm just trying out different locations in my house that I could film in. Sorry, my puppy's on my lap right now. I'm sitting in the living room. We have pretty good lighting, although... My sweater is blinding right now. Also, wanted to mention this curb chain. Somebody commented that this was like the next big thing because I always wear my herringbone chain in my videos. So I got one, so thank you. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the beloved Dr. Dre. I was watching YouTube the other day and I saw a video by Cassandra Bankson come up that was 10 things Dr. Dre made me buy and I was like, yes, yes. I have to film this video and also I have an entire basket of things that she has made me buy. If you're on my channel, you probably already know who Dr. Dre is. I actually did list a poll last week asking if you guys watch Dr. Dre on YouTube and over 90% of people said yes and said how much they love her. But if you don't know who she is, she is a board certified dermatologist. She currently practices out of Houston and she uploads videos to YouTube going over product reviews and general skincare health tips. I think what's different about Dr. Dre from other YouTube channels or other dermatologists really is that she is willing to try out some more popular products by brands that are not technically dermatologists recommended and tell us if they're worth buying or not. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I go to the dermatologist and I tell them my routine, I feel like half the time they have no idea what the products are that I'm talking about. Like literally I was like, oh, I use a Paula's Choice SPF and my dermatologist was like, who? Paula? I don't, we don't know her. And I was like, Damn, girl. I actually found Dr. Dre because I was prescribed tretinoin about a year ago this month. I actually have an entire playlist on tretinoin that I can link up above. It has videos on my results, some of my skincare routines, and also just talking about getting through the purge emotionally because I know it can be a lot. If you're not already, please subscribe. It helps me out so much. And let's go ahead and dive into the first product. The first thing I wanna talk about is the first thing that I actually bought from her. And it is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Extra Dry Skin. The hyaluronic acid product is probably my gateway into to using hyaluronic acid as a booster to my moisturizers is uh, a product that I continue to use, repurchase and recommend and always will is the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry Skin. I'm pointing that out because Neutrogena Hydra Boost uh, makes another make another gel cream that has fragrance in it. I do not recommend that before watching dr Dre my skincare routine was full of fragrance and was honestly incredibly expensive So I was totally down to purchase like a $15 moisturizer that I knew would be good for my very irritated skin while on tretinoin it's sort of a gel texture, but it also is a little bit thicker than a serum. And I like to use this the same way as her, which is the first step once I get out of the shower while my skin is still wet. And then I put my CeraVe PM on top of that to really keep in all the moisture. This has hyaluronic acid in it, which I know is a super popular you know, term right now, and it's a popular ingredient. I think this is a cheap way to get that in your routine. And also it is amazing for oily skin because it doesn't really keep you greasy throughout the day. Love it. Love it, love it. Thank God she talked about it because I don't know if I would have picked it up otherwise. The next one I want to talk about was sort of a fail for me, and that is the Hadalabo sheet masks. And they have uh, three different kind of types of hyaluronic acid, which, you know, people get all excited about having different sizes and shapes of hyaluronic acid, and ew, it can penetrate a little bit more deeply. No, it really, it's just, it's just like having different size particles in your, in your jello jiggler. She's mentioned it on her Instagram a few times and she also uses them right after she gets out of the shower. Hada Labo is a company that typically makes fragrance-free products. I actually use their eye cream in the morning. I can link my morning skincare routine up above so if you're interested, but I thought that this sheet mask was nice, but I felt that it left my skin feeling a little bit greasy. And the next day, I actually did notice a few breakouts from it. That's not to say that it's not a good product. I just think that if you do have extremely oily skin like I do, sometimes sheet masks are not worth it. Personally, it just wasn't for me. I didn't really like them, but I could see people with dry skin having good luck with these. Okay, number three is my holy grail body moisturizer, and that is the CeraVe moisturizing cream in the tub. My moisturizing cream of choice, my, you know, kind of ride or die holy grail that I, I'm now on my like, 
uh, third tub of this um, this year um, is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. Okay, I happen to really, really love this. Um, it is fragrance free and it contains ceramides and it is fantastic applied to wet skin out of the shower. She mentioned this product for people with incredibly dry body skin and eczema, which I have both of. In the winter, my legs literally look like a lizard. And if you have eczema, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm actually planning on filming a video about how I took care of my eczema and how I managed to keep it from coming up this past winter. A lot of it has to do with the routines that Dr. Dre have mentioned in the past and some wraps, a little bit of steroid cream. We'll get into it in another video. I put this on my legs while they're wet right after I get out of the shower and it keeps me from itching and going crazy. I also like CeraVe's anti-itch cream. I can link that down below as well if things are like getting a little bit out of hand. But all in all, I buy this by the giant tub. I think this is 19 ounces and I also get it at Costco because I never wanna run out of it. I love it so much. This is probably, after the Neutrogena Hydro Boost, my favorite thing that I've ever gotten from a recommendation of Dr. Dre. Okay, let's talk about another thing that I like didn't like actually. And that's the number seven under eye patches. They're really nice, you guys. They don't have added fragrance. They're just a nice hydrating hydrogel that has a variety of humectants impregnated on onto the hydrogel. It's got uh, glycerin and chondrus crispus extract, which is a marine um, algae uh, and can help in terms of adding hydration to your skin. Really wonderful. I don't have them with me because I used them all up recently and I'm not going to be repurchasing. It's not that I don't like the serum, it's the actual patch that I cannot stand. Something about the silicone in the patch has tiny little like spikes on it and when you lay it on your skin, it like pokes you in the eye and pokes your skin around your eye. I know that sounds crazy, but let me know if you've had the same experience as me. I'm wondering if it was just the one that I bought. I don't know, but literally every time I would wear them, I would get like pokes under my eye from these like spiky bits of silicone. I have found a better alternative, which is the Pixie Detoxify under eye patches. I don't see any fragrance in the ingredient list and they don't smell like anything. They have some caffeine in them, they feel really nice, and there's like 60 of them in a box, so I highly recommend those. I've had great luck with them, and I just prefer them over the number seven ones, even though those were recommended by Dr. Dre. It was just a miss for me on those. A more recent purchase that uh, Dr. Dre has made me buy is the Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief. This product is aimed to help those individuals who need to hit the reset button on their skincare routine. They've just been going hog wild, way too many different cosmeceuticals, and they have a damaged skin barrier. So the Great Barrier Relief is actually another product from a YouTube brand, and that is from Leah Yu. I've mentioned her on my channel before, and she is very much pro keeping the skin barrier intact, being incredibly gentle on your skin, and helping to build up your skin to keep yourself from developing acne and rashes, etc. I have been dealing with some forehead irritation. I'm doing an entire video on Leah Yu and some of the tips that she recommends for um, broken skin barrier. Barriers, but at the time I thought the gray barrier relief would be a perfect purchase So this is essentially a ceramide serum that is supposed to help a damaged skin barrier It includes tamanu oil uh, Rosehip oil and niacinamide. Those are like the three powerhouse ingredients in here along with ceramides Which are we know are good in the CeraVe products that I use every day I have only used this once and I didn't notice any real irritation But because I'm trying not to mix up my routine too much and I'm actually on an anti fungal cream for my forehead. Like I said, going to do an entire video on that as well. I'm just staying away from this right now, but I think that it's going to be a great addition into my skincare in the winter when my skin gets a little bit dry. I think I'll just use this as a nightly serum. And if you want a full review on this, let me know. I'm happy to start using it earlier if you're interested. Next up is something I've mentioned in literally almost every video I've done, but especially in my evening skincare routine, which is Vaniply ointment. This is the Vaniply ointment, okay? This is uh, a 2% dimethicone ointment that's you know kind of the consistency of vaseline and this stuff is great if you have dry 
dry dry skin this is a wonderful um, moisturizer emollient the reason that i had found this from dr dre was that my husband was developing an allergy to something and we weren't sure what it was he eventually got allergy tested and it turns out he was allergic to soy and almonds and the aquaphor balm includes some irritating soy ingredients so we ended up going with the vanaply ointment which was um, something that dr dre said that she absolutely loved it has minimal ingredients and we have like 20 bottles of these stacked all around the house it's just basically a clear balm and I use this on my lips every single night I have talked about the Laneige lip sleeping mask in a few videos and how I just don't think it's worth it and I have used an entire tub of it and I noticed similar if not better results when using the Vanaply ointment on my lips instead it's also incredibly cheap and it's not as goopy as the Laneige lip sleeping mask on top of that it is great for keeping moisture in if you do have eczema or incredibly dry skin especially on the elbows I just love it has so many uses and it's super super cheap so thank you dr dre so lastly i want to talk about two different masks that are sort of used for similar things but also not let's just talk about the general mask that i am um really loving right now which is the cetaphil purifying clay mask um another product that i want you guys to consider using and the last one i'm going to recommend is the derma control purifying clay mask by Cetaphil. I reviewed this for you guys in other videos, but it's a nice mask that will really help in cutting down on oiliness. You can use it a few nights a week. So I've been making my own face masks with French green clay and aloe at home for a couple years, but I was really interested in the Cetaphil one because it's easier. I can just put it on. I don't have to worry about the cleanup. And also Dr. Dre mentioned that it doesn't completely dry down. So I thought, you know what? That's good for my skin. I don't want to dry it out, which typically when I'm making my clay masks at home, they do get pretty dry. This is a sort of whipped texture and I feel like it does a good job of helping me with my oil control without fully drying out my skin. It has no fragrance in it and I've not experienced any irritation. And I just use this when I feel like I've been super oily and I just wanna get a handle on it and give my face a fresh start for the next day. I try not to use that one too often just because it is a clay mask, it can be a little bit drying, but I do highly recommend it. A more recent purchase, particularly for the fact that I have been dealing with what I think is fungal acne, is this sulfur ointment mask from De La Cruz. A product that I am a huge fan of, I, you can get it on at Walmart here in the States, you can get it on iHerb. Uh, it is the De La Cruz um, Sulfur Ointment. This is a 10% sulfur ointment. Here, I'll just show you guys. It smells, smells foul. <laughs> so this mask is like five or six dollars on Amazon and it's interesting looking, but this is a 10% sulfur ointment that can be used in a couple different ways. And I don't know if I like can't smell, but I've never been able to smell sulfur really, especially in this mask. Like. I know that people say it smells stinky, but I don't really smell it. Does that mean I have coronavirus? <laughs> Just like Dr. Dre likes, there's no artificial colors or fragrances in this, and it is incredibly helpful for people with fungal acne in particular. Sulfur is a natural antibacterial, so it helps in clearing up fungal acne, but it can also be useful to people with general oily skin and regular acne and helping take care of some of the bacteria on the top layer of your skin. The only caution that I would give against using this product is that it is incredibly drying. I made the mistake of using this two days in a row and it actually very much irritated my skin. I noticed good results after the first night, so of course, me being me, I'd used it again the second night, which is also something I talked about in some of the skincare habits that I am trying to break video. I can link that up above. But overusing products when they have good results was one of them. I really like the mask. It's just a simple one ingredient thing. And the fact that I know if I'm dealing with fungal acne in the future, and it's something that I can sort of build into my routine is super helpful. So I just like to keep it in the medicine cabinet just in case I need to use it in the future or if I'm having a super oily, greasy day. A bonus product that I just bought literally a couple days ago is this Carol's Daughter Wash Day Delight shampoo that she literally just mentioned in a vlog like, three days ago. You guys, I am loving this Carol's Daughter shampoo, the Wash Day Delight. I've been using this a few nights a week and what I love about it is the tip. Um, you can put it directly on your scalp and it really does a good job cleaning 
with scalp cleansing. So this is a water to foam shampoo and it has salicylic acid in it. And you're meant to just squeeze this open and literally pour it into your scalp. And it's supposed to give you like a nice cooling sensation. It's actually not fragrance free. It has the slightest scent of aloe and I was just super interested in it. I think it's a cool um, product, but also I think the salicylic acid helps with reviving your scalp a little bit. I have super oily, greasy hair. No shock to anyone here. And so I was just curious to see if that would help with that and also help maybe with clarifying a little bit of uh, the product that I keep in my hair because I do use so much dry shampoo. So if you guys are interested in how I feel about that, I can leave some more info down below or I can make a whole video on that as well. How do we feel about this face makeup? I'm looking in the viewfinder and I like the highlight looks like it's popping, but in real life, it's like incredibly glittery. It's from the Ilya set that I bought in my Sephora fantasy basket video. I'm actually doing a haul that I'm going to go over this product in it. I don't know. What do you guys think? And Dr. Dre, if you're watching this by some chance, just know we love you and we're so thankful for all the work that you do and helping us learn about our skin and taking care of ourselves. So thank you so much from this YouTube skincare community. Please let me know down below some of the products that Dr. Dre has made you buy because I'm always willing to go spend some bucks for that lady. Let me know what I need to buy, especially if you have oily and acne prone skin. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next video very soon.